according to Google. <laughs> Go ahead. Have an influence on. Oh, that's so wonderful. <laughs> okay, so then what does the word influence mean as a noun? <laughs> what does a noun influence mean? The capacity to have an effect on the character development or behavior of someone or something or the okay. effect itself. Perfect. So, as a verb, to influence means that you have the capacity to have an effect on a person's thoughts, uh, behaviors, uh, hopes, dreams, expectations, etc. Okay? So then, what does an influencer do? What is the job of an influencer? Oh, come on, people. You know what influencers do. What do they do? Or you don't know what they do? Influence minors. Yeah, but don't use the word influence. Use another word. Based on the definition educate. of educate. Do what? Educate. Educate. Mm. Okay, I wouldn't use the word educate, but yes, I see your point. Uh, and to influence is to have an effect. Okay? It can be a positive effect, and it can be a negative effect. It's just an effect. If you're gonna have an effect on a person, meaning that the things that that person is gonna start doing, or thinking, or wanting, or expecting, all come because of what you did, or wanted, or said. So an influencer, let's not use the word educate, because then teachers should be influencers. Uh, an influencer causes an effect or a change in the person's behavior and the person's thoughts. It can be a good change, it can be a bad change. Okay, so this whole thing about influencers, when do you think it started? Let me give you a hint. It did not exist when I was your age. So when do you think this whole influencer thing started? When social media became like a thing. Yeah, when social media became a thing, people started thinking like, hey, I want others to think like I think, I want others to act like I act, I'm an influencer, okay? Perfect. And so, when did social media become a thing? Who has an idea, more or less, when this happened? And again, hint. I was like, when I was a kid, it did not exist. So it's really fairly recently. When do you think social media became a thing? Two thousand and something. Two thousand and what? What does this mean? Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand fifteen, more or less. Yes, you're correct. Okay. So what do you think happened to make different groups of people in different parts of the world suddenly decide that they wanted to become influencers? What could have made that happen? Different opinions. But people have always had different opinions. Give me more. What do you think really happened that made people believe like I want uh, I almost gave you the, the, the answer. <laughs> uh, that made people believe that they wanted to influence others. There's this, this uh, thing that social media made available. It starts with an F. Followers. Yes. What are followers? Um, Don't tell me that people who follow. No. <laughs> people that follow influencers. No use the word follow. Yang, what are you doing? Thank you. Come on, people, tell me what are followers? People who do other, what? Hmm? Other social media users. Okay, other social media users, perfect. And then how does a person get followers? when they do something trending. 
Perfect. Perfect. Okay, so there were people who noticed that they had uh, followers and that immediately made them become influencers because they were having some type of influence on those followers. Okay, so that's social media world. In real life, does it work like this? No, are you sure? Give me an example. Do people in real life take out social media out of the equation? Do people in real life have like, you know, followers and are there influencers in real life outside of social? No. Well. Think, think, think. Yes. Give me an example, Carvajal. Donald Trump. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> the oh. people that vote for him are his followers. <laughs> okay, well, then it's all politicians. Okay, give me another example that does not involve politics. F1. What is F1? Formula 1. And how, how is that an example of influencers and followers? Okay, people, you're thinking too deeply. You, all of you have a best friend, right? No. no. Oh, Sean, Sean, you need to get a best friend. All of you have a best friend. And you usually have, you do things in common with your best friend. You have things in common with your best friend. So sometimes your best friend influences you and sometimes you influence your best friend, right? Is that an example of influencers and followers? Yes, it is. So outside of social media, we do have followers. We have people who believe us. We have people who want to imitate us and we do have influencers. So why a social uh, media, particularly Instagram, why has it made it such a, and TikTok, why has it become such a huge thing? This whole influencers and people are calling themselves, oh, I'm an influencer, you just say influencer, you know, stop. Why has it become such a big thing on social media platforms? Why? I have a problem, sorry, I'll be right back. That's ugly, Tomas Carvajal, that's really ugly. I don't even know what that is. Okay, the rest of you, why has becoming a, an influencer, why has it become such a huge thing that people look at these influencers and call themselves influencers and are really uh, proud of being influencers? Why is it such a huge thing? And it's a dangerous thing. Go, who was gonna answer? People, people is always on social media uh -huh. and they spend all their time, all of their time in the phone. So, mm -hmm. that's why they <laughs> discover. Is it a dangerous thing? Yes, because you can, um, you don't know, you really don't know who the person is at, uh, the other side of the screen. <laughs> you don't know if you're making famous a groomer, mm. a pedophile. Mm -hmm. And yes. people don't really expose those things on the internet of because course, they're yeah. obviously getting canceled. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't think you <laughs> never know fully who the person that you're supporting is. Okay, so that's a negative aspect and that's a dangerous part. And another dangerous part, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that a lot of the times these influencers, not always, they're really good influencers out there, but a lot of the times those influencers are even more messed up than the people who are following them. So for instance, um, there are a lot of influencers who might like give bad advice or, or tell you things that are not really good for you. But because you're a teenager, you're simply going to accept it and probably follow it. That's a negative aspect. Tell me some of the positive, um, the advantages, the good things about following influencers.
following influencers. Yeah, if, if it has a positive aspect, right? No. That if they might be like from another country, you know what is happening there because okay. they can inform and share info about that. Okay, that's one, that's good. Who can give me another one? Sean, there has to be a positive aspect to influencers and followers. Think about it. Give me a positive one. Diego, you're really quiet. I want to hear from you. What could be one of the positive aspects or something good that comes from following influencers? Nobody can come up with something good? Oh, there has to be some good people. There has to be good. Daniela? Well, not all the influencers are like a bad, bad persons, but I think that some of them could interact with you and influence you and be a good influence to you and tell you their opinion about some something, like any topic. So Okay. So for example, a few months ago or weeks ago, there was this huge explosion. Where? What country was that? There was this huge explosion and a lot of people died. Do you remember that? It was a few weeks ago. Japan. Where? Japan. I have no idea what you said, but yes, there was a huge explosion. <laughs> in Yemen, I think. No, no it was in Yemen. Mm. Do you that? What did you say, Daniel? I don't know. Oh, come on, look it up. You have your computers or your phone in front of you. So there was this huge explosion, okay? It was during the pandemic. And of course, a lot of people lost their homes and a lot of people lost their lives. So what happened was that um, people started looking towards the influencers to see what the influencers were gonna do, how they were gonna react before they acted. So when the influencer said, okay, let's give, let's help them, then people started giving and helping. So that's a positive aspect of, of um, having an influ or being an influencer. You actually have some type of power to affect the way in which people react. Okay, did you find it? Recent explosion. Where was it? Beirut. Beirut. Yes, in Beirut. Good. So um, <clears throat> that's one example of how influencers can actually use their power to do something positive. Okay, and it's, it's happened in many other tragedies. For instance, uh, a whole group of influencers got together at the beginning of the pandemic and they created this program in which they gave off their own money and told the people who were their followers to also make donations to make sure that people had food during the, the first few months of the pandemic. That's good. But as it was mentioned, uh, they also can use all that power to do negative things. Give me an example of a negative thing that influencers can get a whole lot of people to do. Ask for money. <laughs> it's always all about the money, right? Okay, yeah. so that's one. What else? They can emotionally manipulate their followers. Mm -hmm. And because they are their followers. They think like maybe the guy or the girl is in love mm. with them, mm. making make them believe that. But then the truth is that they are ju they just wanna you know how to naked pics of their followers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you always go to these extremes, but yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. 
Okay, people, so my question to you is this, and I'm gonna give you one minute to think or less. If you were an influencer, tell me one thing you would try to get your followers to do, okay? So you know teachers' minutes are short, right? So you have a few seconds that I'm gonna call a minute to think about this. If I were, remember that when we use uh, if, we have to use were because it expresses possibility, not if I was, if I were, okay? If I were an influencer, I would get my followers to blah, 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 okay? So let me give you a few seconds. Okay, who wants to be first? <laughs> Isabella, you're very quiet. If you were an influencer, what would you try to get your followers to do? To give me money. To give you money. Is that what she said, girl? No, I'm not accepting that answer. Something positive. No, no, none of you. No, give me money. No, visit me. No, come to my house. None of that. Think about something positive, a good thing that you would like your followers to do. If I were an influencer, I would want my followers to, or I would convince my followers to, blah, blah, blah. I will talking. Janice, go ahead. Go ahead, Janice. Mm, to care about politics. Oh, okay, why? Because I think the kids, or the people that don't really care about politics are the ones that are privileged. Okay, tell me more about that. How do you how do you come to that conclusion that the privileged ones don't care about politics? Because the privileged people are always you no know, straight, male, white, and they don't really care about that because they are always they have always been privileged and I think if you don't care about politics it's because you don't really care about the future of minorities or who's gonna lead the country. Okay, that's an interesting perspective. Uh, how do you define politics? What's politics to you? Mm, caring about your future our society's future in your country. So you think that kids uh, your age, how old are you people? 12, 13, 14, 15? I'm oh, 15. 15. So kids between 12 and 15, do you think kids this age should be involved in politics? Or at least- no. not, 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 not literally, but I think I can convince um, adults. Like I always talk about my parents about that and you now other members of my family. Okay, good. So if you were an influencer, you would get your followers to become more involved in politics, right? Yeah. Good one. Okay, Diego. If I were a uh, influencer, I would convince my followers to be what they want. To be what they want. Okay, what do you mean by that? In what, in which aspect? Like if I, I wanna be a, 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 a what? Like professionally or what do you mean? Tell in me To be like you want to be and don't let another person to tell you how you need to be. Okay, so you mean like in every aspect in general? Yes. Okay, that's good. So do you think that a lot of people are not acting as they want to? but acting as somebody else is telling them to act? Yes, yes. And what's the negative effects of that, Diego? That you are not living your life as you want. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very, very few really people happy. get to live their lives as they want. It's, it's basically impossible because from the time you're born, somebody chooses your name, they choose what religion you belong to. They choose your culture. It's kind of really hard. I mean, I wish we lived in a world in which we just got to be who we were. Like, okay, now you're 10 years old. Choose what name you want to have. But no, we hardly ever get choices 
until we're older. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, next person. And Isabella, I'm coming back to you because this give me money thing ain't working. So let's go to uh, Sean, masked boy. Tell me. If I were an influencer, I will convince my followers to don't vote for PRD and to use a mask. Okay. So you're into politics too. <laughs> Why is it so important for you that your followers don't vote for that political party? Because um, we always do the same. And we have to do something different. And when you say we always do the same, what are you referring to? That we always have a per president or a um, Panamanian president. Panamanian president or Panamanita? Because we need Panamanita, Panamanista. Panamanista. Thank you, because he has to be Panamanian. Okay, so you think that that's the problem. And the problem, the solution for you would be to vote for some other political candidate and not the same people as always. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I have a question for you. Do you think, because when these people are doing their political campaign, they say like exactly what everybody wants to hear. And that's how people end up voting for them. Do you think that they actually change and become deficient once they're in the position or they were always deficient and just hiding it? What do you think? I think they are just hiding it. Mm. I think when you vote for someone, you have to really know his past and his actions, what he, he did, not just the campaign. Mm -hmm. So do you think that it's possible that if, particularly with the current president that most people seem to not like, do you think it's possible that if people had done their research and really figured out who this man was, they would not have voted for him? Yes. I mean, teacher, the people will never be combined, convinced with the president. Never. The people will like more and more. Being president is hard just because the people never have enough. You need to do this and this and this, and you can do everything. So it's not possible to have the best president. Do you think that even if he did a good job, there's always going to be people who don't agree with him? Is that what you're saying, yes. Diego? Yes. Okay, what were you saying, Janice? That maybe they had done their research? Um, I really forgot what I was going to say. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, we can always come back to you. Okay, what do the rest of you think? This child who looks like he's sleeping, Daniel. Open your eyes, Daniel. Oh my goodness, oh here he is. I thought you were sleeping. <laughs> Daniel Guillen, um, tell me, if I were an influencer, I would get my followers to? If I were an influencer, I will convince my followers to do recycle and not harm the environment. Okay, yeah, that's a good one. That's a really good one. And one of the things that I find extremely interesting is that now during the, these months of pandemic, a lot of the recycling plants have closed. They're not working. And so I don't understand that. I have no idea why some of the recycling plants are closed and you can't recycle, for example, your bottles. I have like two huge bags of bottles that I can't recycle because the recycling plants are closed. It doesn't make any sense because this would be the perfect time to try to clean up the environment now that everybody's at home. But anyway, that's a different story. Okay, good one, Daniel. So I'm going now with Tomas Carvajal. If I were an influencer. If I were an influencer, I would convince my followers to stop following me. What? Why? Explain. <laughs> because if I were an influencer, that would mean that my life 
went wrong. So I would want to stop being an influencer <laughs> instantly. But you know, you can use your influence for positive things because some of the things that the kids mentioned are really positive. Are they getting people to recycle and um, getting people to pay more attention to politics? Those are good things. So you, you're seeing influencer in a negative light. Look at the no, positive. I mean, I, I don't want to be an influencer. That's what I mean. You are. We all are influencers because we have friends and we have friends who want to do stuff that we say. Fine. If I were an influencer, I would make people give me money to help a friend. <laughs> okay, let's fix it. I would help people. I would. I would convince people to give more donations to charitable causes. Okay, not to give you money. Okay, so who's missing? Daniela and Isabella. Let's go. Teacher, I'm gonna talk. I had Isabella. I will ask my followers to give me money. You know why? Mm. Because in this world, money is very important. Mm. So I could make, I can use my money in for a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I, I will use that money to help people with COVID-19, uh, give food to kids in Africa, and help the hospitals that have kids with cancer. Okay, good. Let's go, Daniela. If I were well, an influencer. If I were an influencer, I would like to convince my followers to stop being shy and start to telling their opinions, obviously in a positive way, but there are too many kids and teenagers that they like are, have a fear to talk and tell what they think in a positive way without any bad word. Um, I think that I could convince them to start sharing their opinions with someone, even though they don't know them. But it could, um, could me with me, if I could help. <laughs> so, so what? <laughs> what's the advantage? What's the advantage of being a kid? and feeling the, the uh, liberty to share your opinion positively. What is the advantage to that? The advantage is that you could a get friends. a positive answer of someone that knows already or uh, understand you about what you are thinking or feeling or living. Okay, what were you saying, hey, Daniel? <laughs> what were you saying? Where did he go? Okay, what were you saying, Daniel? That you can win friends because you you are like you have the same things that he like or something like you know, you understand me, no? Yeah. So I want to the same. Uh huh. Yeah. So I want to go back to two of the things that you mentioned, the one about politics and the one that Diego said about uh, being yourself or just making your own decisions. I, I like those two. I like all, but I like those two because it can further the discussion. So as I told you a few minutes ago, you know, sadly in real life, we don't get to make a lot of our own decisions from the time that you open your eyes on this planet somebody starts making choices for you okay they choose your name they chose your family everything has been chosen for you okay so in spite of all of that i need you to tell me people how can you even if you have all of these decisions already being made for you how can you start making your own decisions at your age without being disrespectful to your parents and your teachers <laughs> is it possible do you think it's possible okay um i actually have a conversation with my mom about what i want to be when i grow up right she, oh, she wants me to study science but i really really hate science <laughs> it's too boring for me i just don't have the interest in it 
so I want to study on other things. I, I don't already decide it, but that's an actual discussion that I have with my mom. That's, I think that could be my first decision. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I, I, I know your mom is probably a wonderful, wonderful woman. So she's just doing this because she loves you. But there's one thing that adults need to remember. And when you become adults, you need to remember. You already made your choices. You got to let your kids make their own decisions. You made yours. You chose who to marry, when to have a baby, all of that as adults. Let your kids make their own decisions. That's really important because there's nothing quite as horrible as going to the university and spending four, five, six years studying something that you hate and then get a job that you hate with people you hate doing something you hate. That's not how you live life. Life is supposed to be about happiness and passion and doing the stuff that really make you feel alive. So, so yeah, I, I, I do understand why your mom is saying that because she loves you, but it's true. I mean, that's a decision that you have to make uh, whenever it is that you figure out, because you don't need to know right now what you want to do. You don't need to know that because you've got time. But whenever you figure it out, it has to be something that makes you feel alive. And that's really important. Okay, so what about the rest of you? What are some, um, what can you do at your age to make sure that at least some of your choices are yours without being disrespectful? I think if you really like trust your parents, you don't need, you don't have like the need or the fear to be attacked, attacked or if there is trust, I think you can talk. So what are some of the types of uh, decisions that people your age should be able to make? That you don't, you're not making them, but you, you think you, you should have the power to make those decisions. Let's go, Isabella, tell me. What's one type of decision that you probably don't make, but you wish you had the power to make it? Or anybody, because Isabella is thinking. Oh, come on, people. A decision that you don't currently make, but you wish you had the power to make it. What would that be? Hey, what are going to be in what next I didn't hear you, Daniel. Repeat that. Mm -hmm. Repeat. What I'm going to be when I grow up. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the same thing that Diego is talking about. Yeah, anybody else, a decision that you wish you had the power to make for yourself at this age and not be influenced by other people's choices? Your personality and the way you want to dress like. The way you want to dress. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that can be dangerous. Mm. Daniela, Sean? Me, me, Daniela. Okay. I would like to have the power, <laughs> yeah, the power of, like Diego said, of dress like the way I want um, and go out with that clothes, any, any type of clothes and feel secure about myself, myself and feel secure that anybody is going to Raid me or oh me. Goodness, what are you planning to wear? <laughs> <laughs> Give me an example, Daniela. What would you like to wear out in public that you don't have the choice to wear right now? Shorts, skirt, um, top. I always go out with jeans <laughs> and big clothes and sweaters and some things like. So like you're covering up yourself. Yes. And you wish you had. Even, even if I go out with that type of clothes, they see me and tell me things that are nasty. 
Okay. Yeah, the word is clothes, not clothes, it's clothes. The e is silent, clothes. But yeah, that, mm -hmm. but there's a whole thing, I have a whole theory behind that, thing, Daniela. If you're going to dress and you're going to be uh, worried about who's going to tell you something dirty, then that's exactly what's going to happen. You dress for you and you don't care about what people are going to say. Because I have seen little old ladies with big long dresses and the guys are still like, woo, woo, you know. So you just, you just get dressed and you just ignore everybody. Just go because it's, it's what you, but yes, at your age, you're what, 12, 13? How old are you? 40. Okay, I was getting there. That was my next number. So <laughs> it's a little bit dangerous for a little girl 14 to be wearing short skirts and stuff, not because you're a bad girl, but because sadly, society is going to judge you. And they're going to say things about you, which shouldn't bother you, but uh, that's the ridiculous society that we live in. But yeah, I understand you. Okay, uh, what about you, Sean? Sean, you've been silent. It's because of the mask, isn't it? I told you, it's the mask. Give me an example of a decision that you wish you could make for yourself. What to eat, for example. <laughs> sure, I eat what I want. Not really. I actually eat what I want. <laughs> okay, so you eat what you want. So that's not a good one. Give me an example. Um, McDonald's. Mm -hmm. No, but you're giving me an example of what you want to eat. No, I'm giving you. I'm asking you. Give me an example of a decision that you wish you could make. People, there are so many little decisions that we don't make that we don't even sure. realize that it wasn't. I have good. another one. I have another one. Okay, Diego, go. That it's how I want to live when I grow up or where I want to live when I grow up. I don't want to live in a mansion. You don't? I really want to. Mm -mm. I, I don't like too big spaces. Okay. So you want to live where? I'm really tiny. I. I mean, I'm very little, so I feel more little when I'm in a big place. <laughs> okay, so your choice would be to live where? In a little house on a beach? Maybe, but my mom t thinks that I need to expect more and more, but I don't want to. I I want to be in an apartment or something apartments little. Nice. Apartments are nice. You don't have to worry about the grass in the backyard, <laughs> so those are nice. Okay, so yeah, there are so many little uh, choices that we don't get to make, but we're so accustomed to other people making those choices for us that we don't even realize it. And then it becomes a habit, and we grow up and we become adults that simply sit and wait for people to make decisions for us. And, and it's- Teacher, I know. What? Teacher, another decision could be if you want to live with someone or not. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. That's a good sure, one. Sure, I have one. Sean, yes. To choose the girl I wanna be married. To choose, uh, the, to choose what? The girl. So you're not gonna be able to choose that? That's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Isabella, tell me. So I have uh, $500 in my PG bank. So I have a neighbor that have cancer. So I want to give him my money, but I actually am very, como es tímida. Try to give him my money. That's very nice of you, Isabella. That's really nice of you. So let's take the next few minutes, few minutes and talk about the political aspect that Janice brought up. Uh, one of the things that she said that if she were an influencer, she would try to get young kids more involved in politics. Okay, so people, politics is simply uh, 
the way society works. And sometimes we see politics as, ah, esa cosa de viejos, and we're over here. But the truth is that it is true, all of us should be involved in politics. Not everybody should be out on the street with it, you know, eh, and say who to vote for, but you need to have an idea of how politics works. Because in a few years, all of those politicians are gonna be dead, and you're gonna be the new ones that might be taking up political positions. So you have to have an idea of what's going on. Now, you might not wanna be president or diputado or whatever else, that might not be what you want, but you have to vote you're gonna to have to vote. And so you need to keep your eyes open to look to see, and I think it was Sean who mentioned, who are people constantly voting for, okay? And I think uh, Janice said, it's always the, the uh, white man, you know? And, and look at these things and decide like, hey, I'm tired of this. I want a difference, I want something different. And this uh, knowledge doesn't Im Im immediately come to you like, oh, I'm 18, I can vote, now I know, no. You have to be preparing yourself and not necessarily looking at all the news and reading all the newspapers, but you know, get an idea, get an opinion. Think sometimes, even if you don't say it, like, hey, I don't like this. When I get to, to vote, I'm gonna make sure not to vote for this type of person. So it's something that everybody should be involved in. Okay, so finishing off our topic about influencers, ladies and gentlemen, we are all influencers. All of us are influencers and we all have followers whether we like it or not, or whether we know it or not. We have friends that look up to us. We have people who look at us to see what we're doing. And sometimes our decisions influence or have an effect on other people and we don't even know it, okay? So if we remember that even if we might not have a million followers on social media, or we might not even have social media, but if we remember that even then we are still influencers in one way or the other, then it makes you kind of make smarter decisions because you never know who's watching you. And not because you're making decisions to please other people, but ultimately you're going to make the decisions that are best for you as an individual. Uh, your self-esteem, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the way in which your self-esteem is going to be measured is with the quality of decisions that you make. Not the amount of selfies, not the amount of followers, not the type of house or car or clothes. Your self-esteem is gonna be demonstrated with the quality of your decisions. What, means, what this means is that people with low self-esteem make very stupid decisions. People with high self-esteem make very good decisions. Of course, we're human, you make mistakes sometimes, but your self-esteem is what's gonna determine the quality of the decisions you make, okay? Nobody who was, in school in third, fourth grade, or even in, in seventh or eighth or ninth grade, nobody said, oh, when I grow up, I wanna be picking up garbage off the street, or I wanna work in El Chocho. Nobody said that. That was nobody's goal, but it happens. We have people pushing paleta cars, we have people selling stuff in El Chocho, and that was never their dream. But what happens when you don't pay attention from your young kid to your self-esteem, and to the quality of your decisions, you end up having that kind of life. And this is where uh, a lot of people get it wrong. We think that, oh, you get to 18 and suddenly you know everything. That's not how it works. From your age, you have to start programming yourself to make better decisions. Because not only because you can influence other people, but because it says a lot about you as an individual, okay? so. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, we're all influencers. We all persuade, try to, I just gave you a persuasive speech right here. We all try to persuade people or have an effect on people with our thoughts and our actions. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just make sure that you are influencing people positively a lot more than negatively, okay? So we're gonna finish this off for today. You have your homework in your outline. What are you doing, Sean? You have your homework in your outline. Make sure you get it done. Don't let stuff accumulate. Start working early on your stuff. I think spelling has a deadline. I think spelling has a deadline. Make sure you get your work in on time. Last trimester, people, it's almost over. Make it a good trimester, okay? Bye-bye, see you next time.